I always like stories, as you know. Um, we need the name for somebody that's going to be a running cliff diver. What do you like? Stewart. All right, so Stuart, the incredible running cliff diver, without any reservations, approaches the edge of this cliff at high speeds with every intent of jumping off of the cliff perfectly horizontally. Now, the fact that Stuart does this perfectly horizontally is particularly important. We're not going to we're not going to provide him with any initial vertical velocity. In other words, his initial velocity in the y direction is going to be equal to 0 meters per second. He is launching off perfectly horizontally off of this cliff. V1x, however, is a completely different story. V1 in the x direction for little Stewie is going to be equal to, and he is quite a mighty strider, 30.0 meters per second. <laughs> Oh, mama, super stewy, okay? 30 meters per second, he's going to leap off of this cliff. Maybe we should have stuck with a story about a car. But 30 meters per second, okay? You know, that's a good point. Let's make this safe. Okay, so we've got water at the bottom of this cliff. And if you want to put an element of danger into your problem, it could be shark-infested water. But it's up to you. It's up to you. Yes, ma'am. If he's running off the cliff, why is his initial velocity zero? His initial velocity in the y direction. I want to oh, oh, I want to be very clear about this. This is the direction that's x. Oh, okay. This is the direction that's y. And for argument's sake, I'm going to make that direction positive x direction, and that direction the positive y direction. Sorry <laughs> for the glitchiness. I'd also like to point out that this cliff is 100 meters tall. This is quite a mighty platform that he's going to jump off. 100 meters? Yeah, 100 meters tall. And I'd also like to point out what range is. We all know what it, what it means to say what the flight time is, or what the hang time is, or the time that somebody's in the air for, because those all sort of mean the same thing. But the range, some people are not so clear about, because sometimes it gets mixed up with what they talk about in math class. So when we're talking about projectiles, the range is the horizontal displacement that, that something achieves before it splashes down. Okay? So I could say that delta d in the x direction is what we call range. It's not much of a vocabulary word, but there we have it. Um, there's two things I want to know. One thing that I'd like to know is flight time. Flight time. Oops. The other thing I would like to know is the range. So we'd like to know what little Stuart's flight time is, and we'd like to know what his horizontal displacement is. Now, if you wanted to sketch it out, we all know about parabolic motion at this point. It's going to look something like this going to be some sort of parabola that lands uh, hopefully beyond the sharks and maybe they don't notice him. Um, but to figure out the fall time, if this is a 100 meter cliff, that's, is that Y thinking or is that X thinking? Yeah, it's Y thinking. So what I'd like to do is set out all the things I know about the Y direction and then I'd like to set out all the things I know about the X direction, okay? So in the Y direction, one thing that I know is that V1Y is equal to 0 meters per second. Another thing that I know is that acceleration in the y direction, we're going to call it acceleration g, a g, is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. Another thing that I know for this, this uh, jump is that displacement in the y direction, at least for landing, is going to be equal to 100.0 meters. And we're going to say it's positive because he's going to travel in the positive direction. We've defined, defined down as positive. Is there anything else we know? Well, we, we, could, we could find out what V2 is, but we don't know it yet. And we could find out what the flight time is, but we don't know it yet. That's actually what we're being asked to do here. Range is how far it goes horizontally. Okay. 
Now I want to take stock. I want to take stock over here. Further over here, I would like to take stock of all the things I know in the x direction. In the x direction, v1x is equal to 30.0 meters per second. Also in the x direction, uh, I could make the claim that acceleration in the x direction is equal to zero, but that doesn't really get me anywhere because we kind of know that we're going to assume that acceleration is equal to is equal to zero in the x direction. So that doesn't take us too far. Delta d in the x direction, it's kind of something I'm looking for in double i. Um, do we know anything else in the x direction? We'd like to know displacement in the x direction, but that's the range. We, frankly, we don't know much in the x direction. We don't really. In the y direction, that's where all the money is right now. And when I talk about flight time, the amount of time that it takes for you to hit the ground has to do with how long it takes you to fall, right? So thankfully, flight time actually has a lot to do with what's happening in the y direction. So I'd like to focus on that. The amount of time it takes for me to get launched horizontally is going to be the same amount of time as it takes for me to achieve this displacement straight down if I were to just fall off the edge of a cliff, let alone jump horizontally off the edge of this cliff. So I'm going to make use of some of this information here to figure out what the flight time is. In the vertical direction then, I know the displacement, I know velocity, initial, and I know acceleration. I want to know delta t to hit the ground. You guys think of a good uh, kinematics equation that has v1 acceleration and displacement where I want to find delta t. It's sort of one of those matching game things. Yeah? Is it um, d equals v1 I think you're mixing up two different yeah. formulae. Uh, I, you started off saying one that v1 looked like this. Yeah, time squared. Yeah. The squared is important too. Um, that's actually a really good choice. One thing I want to point out before we go any further with this is that if v1 is equal to 0, you get to eliminate that term. Because v 0 times anything is going to make that term equal 0. So this equation will Yeah, because look, we want to know, know time, we know acceleration, we know v1, which actually made that term be equal to 0. Okay. Sorry, the second term equal, equal to 0. And we know displacement. So now this expression becomes delta d equals 1 half a delta t squared. Yeah, if the initial velocity is not zero, then you're left dealing with a quadratic. Yeah. It's pretty sweet when v1 is equal to zero. So for, for, a, whole, for a horizontal launch off of a cliff, it's very easy. Uh, there will, be, will come a day when you have angled launches off of a cliff where the initial velocity in the y direction isn't zero. Okay? But for, for, but for now. But for now. Possibly, or we might come up with some other strategy. Okay, all right, so I want to get delta t all by itself and I want to get rid of the squared sign. So multiplying both sides by t, uh, 2, I get delta d, 2 times delta d. Dividing both sides by a, I get a on the bottom here, equals delta t squared. Or if I square root both sides, I'm left with delta t is equal to the square root of 2 delta d over a. And I could figure out how long it would take for something to just fall vertically. But as we've discussed, that's the same time it'll take for something to hit the ground if you launch it uh, horizontally off of a cliff. So subbing in those values, <clears throat> delta t equals 2 times, well, delta d in the y direction is 100 meters divided by 9.81 meters per second squared all square rooted. And I need some help from somebody with a calculator. 2 times 100 divided by 9.81, all square rooted. Four point five. 4.5 sounds about right. 4.5 seconds. So 4.5 seconds to hit the ground. That would be our flight time. And we can make a statement like, therefore, little Stewie takes 4.5 seconds to splash down. Now, if I want to figure out what the range is for little Stewie, 
I'm thinking what, X or Y? Am I an X thinker or a Y thinker? X. Beautiful. All right. So I can make use of this. I'm going to rewrite what I know about the X direction. I know that V1X, so that was, we just solved really part I. Now let's do a Y. V1X is equal to 30.0 meters per second. And we used to say that's all we knew, but now we know something new. We know how long he gets to travel at 30 meters per second. We know how much time he has before he hits the ground. Now you know there's time in the air. Yeah. yeah. We know that we've got 4.5 seconds before little Stewie splashes down. Fair enough? If I know the velocity in the x direction, and I know that the velocity doesn't change as we discussed, if I say that v1x and v2x are the same, instead of saying v1x equals 30 meters per second, I could say vx average is equal to 30 meters per second. Do you be known an equation that has V average and delta T and delta D in it? Delta D equals V average times time. Yeah, delta D equals V average times time. I really like that one. And a lot of people may have it memorized as V average equals delta D over delta T. But very basic permutation, we could have delta D equals V average times delta T. So V average is 30 meters per second. Delta T is 4.5 seconds. And 30 times 4.5, what do we get? 135? 135? 135 meters. Okay. And we weren't as good as we could have been. Was 4.5 the exact time on the seconds? Yeah, pretty much. 4.51? Oh, 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 no, it was 4.52? Oh, no, 4.52? OK, because I, I heard some people debating things. What's 4.52 times 30? This is so embarrassing. What's 4.52 times 30? 135.6. So that actually makes a difference here when we have our, our rounded value to three sig digs, 136 meters. Oh my gosh. Rounding prematurely makes a big difference. 136 meters. You'd be a meter off. So if I want to overshoot the sharks, if I want to jump the shark here, how far away had the, had, uh, or how close had the shark be at a, a minimum? Probably 136 meters. Probably want to, I don't want to land on the shark because that would be a wild ride. If I jumped that far, <laughs> that fast, landed on a shark, and it would be like something from a Dos Equis commercial, right? <laughs> he rides sharks for fun. Anyway. Yeah, Bigfoot takes pictures of him. Sure. All right. Anyway, so we could figure out what his flight time is and his range. 